tonight we want to talk to you about nuclear power, and we brought an expert in nuclear power that I think that, uh, you will really enjoy hearing from, Arjun Makajani, who's over here. Um, so far in Victoria, there's really only been one side of the story that's been uh, talked about, and that's Exelon's side. And there's definitely two sides to be discussed about this issue. The issue of nuclear power is too important to decide on the basis of partial information and on the basis of biased reports. We've brought Arjun here tonight to begin a discussion and a dialogue in this community about nuclear power, about the issues that exist, the very real issues that exist with regard to nuclear power. We are opposed to the nuclear power plant that is proposed by Exelon in Victoria for a number of reasons. It's not the right site. It's a bad use of water. We think there are major economic issues about it from the standpoint of the future of Victoria. Issues about short-term economic benefits versus long-term economic benefits. Issues about how much bang do you get for the water that you spend. We also believe that nuclear power as a general proposition is simply too expensive. And we also believe that nuclear power creates waste and there is not a safe and sound way of disposal and until that exists, nuclear power is not safe, period. We support alternative energy sources. We support conservation. We support renewables. And we are convinced that when the full costs are considered, many other alternatives will be preferable to nuclear power. I did my doctorate in nuclear fusion I think nuclear fusion could be an excellent energy source if we could make it to work. Uh, it's not there yet. Uh, there's nuclear medicine, there's nuclear instrumentation. There are many applications of nuclear technology that are quite good. I came to my conclusion of that nuclear fission that powers the kind of commercial reactors we have is not a very good technology. It poses a lot of risks, uh, and we can do without it. In effect, what you will be doing you're not going to use this electricity here. Very little of it will be used, even if your population increases a lot. This is 3,000 megawatts is, if it operates continuously is enough, 1,000 megawatts can supply nearly a million homes, averagely speaking, on an annual average basis. So 3,000 megawatts is, is three, 3 million residences, uh, roughly speaking. So you're not going to consume it here in Victoria. You have 60 or 70 or 80,000 people. It's going to be exported. So effectively, you're exporting the electricity from here, but effectively what's happening is, if somebody in Houston consumes the electricity, they're really also consuming the water, although it's being evaporated over here. So the water consumption over here is, so the water footprint of Houston, or El Paso, or wherever the electricity goes, will happen here. We've heard of carbon footprint, so we may import things from China, or Mexico, or Canada, and they emit carbon over there. And so part of our carbon di dioxide footprint may be in Canada or China or Mexico. So he, in this case, the water footprint of the places that consume the electricity will be right here in Victoria. Let me close by saying, I know you need jobs in this commu community. And as we can see in the future, this situation might become more desperate. I think if you want sustainable jobs, they'll go beyond the there's no doubt during the construction phase, you build these reactors, you'll have lots of jobs. What will come locally and what not, I'm not very well equipped to say. But you will have a lot of jobs in this neighborhood during the construction period. You will have far fewer for the operation of the reactors. But if you, it, it's quite possible, and I think likely, that these reactors will be economic lemons before they come online. Because the costs of solar energy are going down and wind energy is already cheaper and you have plenty of it here in Texas. So there may be no buyers for this electricity, in which case you will be stuck with an economic lemon in your neighborhood and you will have boom and bust. This is not theoretical. This already happened in the late 70s and early 80s. You heard about Yogi Berra and Deja Vu all over again. For me, I've been in energy since 1971. This is really Deja Vu all over, all over again. Why do we want to use government loan guarantees to take communities and give them hope and do what the Tennessee Valley Authority did in the late 1970s and early 1980s and canceled so many reactors in the middle of construction? Everybody got laid off. Electricity rates skyrocketed. Industry left. 
You don't want this risk. You really don't want this risk. But you should consider whether you want to trade this off or whether you want to go to California and talk to Nano Solar or First Solar and invite them to bring a solar manufacturing facility to your neighborhood. I think if your reactor operates, at the very least, you're going to use a lot of water and you are very likely to be stuck with that nuclear waste in your neighborhood for a very long time. Exelon has proposed to use 75,000 acre feet of water per year. Uh, that was at least the initial water needs. That may be reduced some. I think if you use Arjun's number, you get down to 50, 55,000 acre yeah, feet. 45, 50. 45 to 50, something like that. But it's a lot of water. Uh, if you just think in terms of jobs created, um, 600 permanent jobs. If you use 60,000 acre feet, basically it's 100 acre feet per job. Uh, Formosa, by comparison, I, I read a computation, it's about 20 acre feet, feet per job. Uh, you've got to question what type of long-term commitment you're making with regard to water per permanent jobs. Region L is the only, plan, only planning region in Texas that does not have an approved water plant. And that's important because we're talking about a major use of water from the Guadalupe River and there is no regional plant. This is the American Rivers Association. It identified the Guadalupe River as one of the most threatened rivers in the United States a few years ago. During the drought of the 1950s, again coming back to this, if you had full utilization of all of the water rights, which would include the right that, that Exelon uh, is, is uh, optioning, all you would have flowing into the bays is the little bit of purple that is shown there. My question is, is uh what is the process by which this plant can be stopped? Uh, we raised a lot of cane in talking about it, but I don't know the precise procedures that could or may be used to, <coughs> to stop the plant from being built. I think you need to get to the federal officials about these loan guarantees. If you want to defeat this plant, it won't get built without the loan guarantees. Now, and just let me say that, that at TSEPA that we are planning to in, uh, become involved in the Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, permitting process. Yes, sir. Uh, I came down from uh, New Braunfels because we we're very concerned about water up there, of course. And uh, the Guadalupe affects all of us. And of course, the further down we come, the more it uh, affects the folks down here. But the question I have is, uh, I heard you uh, previously speaking of solar and wind energy. And I have seen plans um, out in, for out in West Texas that claim that they can produce all of the electrical energy that we need here in Texas and have energy left over for selling to uh, other states, sister states. Um, how do you assess that? You have more installed wind energy capacity than California. And certainly in recent years, you have installed much more of it. The recent development that's very heartening is the, is the decision to allow $4.9 billion of investment in transmission lines uh, from West Texas and other renewable energy zones to bring that to the cities. So I do think that you are right that when you assess the renewable energy resources in Texas, there's not only enough to supply this state, but also to export. The, the questions, at a certain point, you have to deal with the questions of intermittency, what happens when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine. We have to embark on developing smart grids. I've just finished a study about the city of San Antonio and comparing their investment in proposed or con investment that they're considering in a nuclear power plant uh, with efficiency, storage, combined heat and power, uh, and renewable energy. And I found they would save about 1.4 billion to 3.1 billion if they went the renewables and efficiency route. 